Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Lisa Malavnik, a Catholic strengths coach certified by the International Coaching Federation and the Gallup Corporation. The Wonderfully Made show is all about the intersection of faith and talent. Our guest tonight is Patrick Molino, a successful entrepreneur using strengths coaching to renew the Catholic Church. But before we bring him on, I'd like to explain that in our conversation today, we'll be using the language of the world-renowned talent and personality profile, the Clifton Strengths Assessment. So we'll be talking about talent themes, which are ways to identify the powerful, God-given potential found in all of us, and the idea of strengths, which is when talents are mature. It's when your natural capabilities become so well developed, they become part of your personal style and help you perform with consistent excellence for God's glory and your greater joy. Because when we know our own design and we experience that gratitude toward God, we also have greater confidence, love, and appreciation for the designer himself. All right, everybody, without further ado, it is my joy to welcome my very special guest, Patrick Molino. Patrick Molino is a devoted husband to Andrea and father to Therese. He co-owns Molino Tile Carpet Wood, a successful chain of flooring stores in, in Western Pennsylvania. He's a co-founder and catalyst for several ministries and lay apostolates. And in 2010, Patrick and Andrea founded the Pittsburgh chapter of Legatus, an organization that helps Catholic CEOs learn and live their faith. In 2015, Pat was inspired by the writings of St. St. John Paul II in Pastores Dabo Vobis, section 43 on human formation, and started coaching Catholic pastors and their lay leaders. In 2017, Pat teamed up with Craig Coza to create the Human Formation Coalition, an ecumenical 501c3 that awakens a robust understanding of the integration of all four pillars of formation, and that's human, spiritual, intellectual, and pastoral vocational within leadership development contexts. So needed. Since 2017, HFC has catalyzed human formation coaching and learning opportunities for hundreds of clergy and thousands of lay leaders globally. HFC has trained hundreds of coaches around the world and facilitates leadership circles for cultivating vision in faith-based leaders. My goodness, welcome to the program, Pat. Uh, it's really amazing what you and Andrea have done and what you continue to do through your fantastic nonprofit, the Human Formation Coalition. Great to be here, Lisa. Appreciate the opportunity to engage with you tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, we are having so much fun because uh, we just share so much of the same vision for the church and how awakening people's natural capabilities can really just get the church off the bench and, and really into the game. Uh, so uh, I always love getting together with you. So in a few minutes, we're going to do a flyover of your talents. We're going to talk about what's on screen there, everybody, those top 10 talents, all the different domain colors, and what those mean to Pat, um, and kind of how they help him succeed or struggle, uh, what those mean to him. And he is a strengths coach, so we're going to really get some good stuff here. But first, Pat, if you would please step us into that Ephesians 4 vision that you have for human formation, which is at the root of your nonprofit ministry. Yeah, if you could pull up the, um, that diagram from our about page, it talks yeah. about the, the four pillars of formation. So Pope John Paul in 1992 wrote a document, uh, Pastores de Bobobis, which is, I will give you shepherds. And he identified four dimensions of formation, intellectual, uh, pastoral, human, and spiritual. And generally speaking, in the church, we do a pretty good job at spiritual, uh, a really good job at intellectual, less of a good job in, in pastoral and human. And our vision is really to elevate the conversation and elevate the vision, the human formation piece, and really try to catalyze a vision for integrated formation. So we do that with coaching, coach training, conversations with key influencers and decision makers in the church. And that's really at the core of who we are, is elevating the conversation, elevating the vision for integrated formation, special emphasis on human formation. 
Yeah, and let's keep that up just a little bit longer so people can really look at it. Kent, thank you. I'm talking to our producer. Um, because when we think about, it makes so much sense. We love our Catholic conferences and our books and and the things that we listen to, our podcasts, that's such great intellectual, and it, and it kind of bleeds out into our spiritual formation too, which we can have spiritual directors and all of that. But really digging deep into uh, personal vocation, how God is calling each of us really uniquely into the world, uh, that pastoral, vocational, and human formation. Um, could you say just a little bit more about what's missing? Yeah, so if you, if you think about that, what they call pastoral, some call it vocational, others call it the apostolic pillar. If you really believe, and we do as Catholics, that uh, people's action comes out of their being and who they are, if we don't do human formation well, we're not going to get the pastoral, apostolic, and vocational dimension right. So um, we really believe that, that that's one of the key missing pieces in the church. And if you read, if you read paragraph 43 of, of Pastor Estabo Vobis, Pope John Paul talked about our clergy and then by extension, our lay leaders, uh, the need for them to be a, a bridge, not an obstacle to the gospel. So I, I've met some incredible, lovely, holy priests, but in their humanity, sometimes, not always, but sometimes they can really be a, an obstacle to the gospel. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's a human trait. <laughs> you know, uh, I have a witness here of my own mm -hmm. life and my own being an obstacle to the gospel. So, um, and I know you're not singling priests out. You have, with great love and incredible generosity, been pouring into priests for a long time because of the Human Formation Coalition, um, which is kind of your, your hands and feet in the world. Um, hundreds of priests have had in-depth and life-changing coaching. So just want to make that clear to everybody here. You're somebody who loves our priests, and I appreciate you for that. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, love them deeply. And you're right. I mean, all of us, uh, we could talk a little bit about that in our, in our conversation about my strengths, but, uh, you know, I always uh, was in need of human, a better human formation. So if you look at my top 10, uh, I have, I am very, very heavy in thinking, very, very heavy in the influencing domain, very light in the relationship domain, light in the execution domain. So execution is something I can always delegate out as I'm in my, my day job is uh, we have a business with over a hundred employees. I can always delegate out the execution, but you really can't delegate out the relationship piece. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've got a new relationship. So my wife would tell me for many, many years, I don't have good relationship skills, and I never believed her. I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> but so everyone talk, at work where I'm the boss is nice to me and smiles all the time. I must be doing really well. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't really until I had my, my first coaching session on strengths, or my third or fourth session, when Joe Cavanaugh, who was my coach at the time, and also my mentor, still my mentor, said to me, uh, Pat, you really don't care what other people think of you. And I'm like, Joe, I didn't know I was supposed to care what other people think of me. So, <laughs> so I, I am someone who can speak from experience on the importance of human formation, life coaching, anything that invests in the human person. Yeah, and, and, and you know, we can uh, just kind of fly with that. I just want to point out to our listeners and our watchers that the orange are the influencing themes. Those tend to be charismatic, high-profile leaders. They're people who ignite action in others, and that is Pat to a T. The green are the strategic thinking themes. He's a thinker. He's super creative. He's a visionary. And so that's why you see so much green there. That's somebody who can think so fast it blindsides other people, the insights, the rapid decision making. Um, and that arranger there, the dark purple, that's the executing thing. He was saying he's really good at putting the pieces together, kind of seeing how things connect and all of that and making them run well. He's really successful in his business, but he's really gotten good at you know, uh, delegating out a certain amount of that execution and that connectedness, which often is really good at bringing people together, but also making the deeper connections. And you can see like right off the bat where Pat gets this sense of connection to the church, to the family of 
God and to that bigger picture of the human family and all of us kind of in this together. So um, just wanted to make that a little clearer in a generic sense, but I definitely want you, why don't we just go there, Pat, since that's where we are right now. Tell us a little bit of, about how this kind of awareness in you um, has just kind of helped you to thrive and helped your formation. And you can take us into the other assessments too, Pat. Yeah. Take us wherever you'd like to go with this. Yeah. So when we when we really go deep with leaders, there's really there's really two things we look at. We we look at their natural abilities uh, through strengths, and we look at their non patterns. So maybe themes twenty nine through thirty four in the Clifton Strengths tool. But another tool that that we've been really working with for probably six or seven years. One of my mentors, Alan Hirsch is a real thought leader around the genius in Ephesians 4, 7 through 12. Um, some will be, a, he will give some as apostles, some, some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as shepherds, some as teachers. So if you think of the Ephesians 4, 7 through 12, the five-fold ministry, the sent one, the apostle, the prophet, the aligner, uh, the evangelist, the shepherd, the teacher, if you really look at, at church history, the really successful missional um, movements had all five of those charisms, ministry styles deployed. So what we look at when we work with leaders is what are your natural talents? We use the strengths tool. There's other tools, I'm sure. Um, we use a couple others, but mostly strengths. And then we also look at this, uh, what's called APES. There's another version of it called Impact, which is a a marketplace version, and it really measures how we show up on teams. So in Ephesians 4 framework, my ministry style or my, my contribution to a team is typically the um, apostolic and prophetic kind of orientation. So always wanting to move forward, um, always challenge, challenging status quo, the, 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 the kind of prophetic, where I'm really, when I'm, where I'm really light is in the shepherding. So in my in my reality, in my context, even in my business, if I don't, if I'm not operating out of a well-rounded team, um, it could be like, it could be pretty dangerous. I, mean, I could, I can get into a lot of trouble. There could be bodies everywhere because I am full speed ahead. So, so you're I'm such a nice, directly. gentle guy, and you always say that there's a lot, that there's bodies in your wake. I just well, want to attest getting... to. He's kidding. <laughs> So my, my HR director, she's lovely, and um, she's, I think, four of her top five. She's responsibility, and I think she has four relationship in her top five. Wow. So, and my wife has uh, four relationship in her top five. So wow. the Lord is just giving me these, these people that uh, help round me out. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. We talk, I do a lot of work with leaders, even marketplace leaders, um, not only church leaders, but marketplace leaders. And there's, there's leading a team and there's leading out of a team. And, and they're two different things. So one of my, one of my good friends is a, is a priest and he talks about this. He's actually Father James Mallon, a really well-known priest in the, in the leadership space. And he talks about leading a team versus leading out of a team. Uh, leading a team is more of a command and control. Leading out of a team is more of a, a mutual interdependence, a mutual submission. So when I'm leading out of a team, I'm effective. When I'm leading a team, I'm less effective. Hmm. Can you just make the distinction for us? What's the difference in how you approach those team conversations between leading and leading out of? Yeah, so, so for me, I have to... Anytime I work with anybody in a team, even at, even at Molyneux, I, I look at how their, their DNA, how they're wired. So we use strengths extensively in my company. We use um, the marketplace version of Ephesians 4. So there is actually a tool that was created by the Newton Institute that takes, takes those five-fold themes and puts them in marketplace language so that people, mm -hmm. I, I can't use biblical language at Molyneux would create all kinds of confusion and problems potentially. But 
Uh, but those five-fold ministry styles really, I believe, are part of the created order. I believe that that um, that if teams function with all five of those five-folds, so so at it, it Moana, we look at their natural talents and we look at the five-fold and how they how they elevate teams. And that's so I go in with that with that frame of mind. Yeah, and so you're looking for that strength to call out in someone. So say you have somebody who's really good at executing, right? Or somebody who's really good at seeing all the problems. So that restorative is an executing theme where that person, you bring them in when you've done the visionary work, you've done the brainstorming. Now you need somebody to say, what are the potential problems here that we need to be prepared for or change course a little bit to take into account? Um, are those, those the kinds of things you might see in your team? So the, exactly. So the, the, um, the impact tool, which was, was created by an organization called the Newton Institute. Uh, the founder is Rick Newton. He's a friend of mine. That tool, um, I use along with strengths to really enter into a, a vision of serving leadership, because as Rick says, the highest form of, of serving leadership is to steward the gifting and DNA of the people that you're called to lead. So my vision of, of leadership is probably a little different than the world's vision of leadership. It's, uh, it's, it's a vision of leadership that's based on stewardship. You know, if you go back to Genesis and if you go back to the Bible, Adam and Eve were called to, um, to steward. They had yeah. domain. Yeah. So I think that that's the vision of leadership that we really need to be tapping into. You know, I, I, we could talk about that. I mean, I, I long for the day when the church stops going to the world for leadership best practices <laughs> and that, and that the, the world comes to the church because everything we, we need to know about leadership is in the scriptures, everything. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not saying we can't learn a lot from the world, but we really need to be able to integrate what's in the world with truth. It comes mm -hmm. from the word of God. So when I, we do a lot of work with seminaries, that's how seminarians, uh, and when I engage with these seminarians, I always say, look, my dream for you is that someday in 30 years or 20 years, you'll be so good at leadership that, that CEOs will come to you to learn how to lead according to the way that the scriptures tell us CEOs should lead. Yeah. What a game changer that would be for our parishes and just for the confidence of our priests. Um, I just want to, speaking of priests and seminarians, I interviewed Father Boniface Hicks in last week's episode. And uh, he is the director there of the St. Vincent Institute, and he does a lot there with strengths coaching. But that has a lot to do with you. He says that in Catholic coaching, all, re all roads lead back to you. Um, so please tell us a little bit about your intersection with Father Boniface and, and, and how you kind of ignited a new path in him. Well, let's just say that when your wife tells you you need a new spiritual director, you need a new spiritual director. <laughs> so, so, yay andrea <laughs> so she um so by the grace of god somebody referred me to father boniface and i had my first meeting with him and i and i said to him you know point blank and this is actually this is my activator command maximize your self-assurance in, in play and i i said to him i said you know i i help lead a business i'm part of an executive team of a large business and I've had good spiritual direction, and but I feel like, but I don't want to be a second-rate. I want, I want, I don't want to be a second-rate version of somebody else. I want to be, I want my spiritual direction, my formation, to allow who I am to come forth. And I feel like I'm not getting good human formation in my spiritual direction. And I said, can I? I would love to try something with you. I would love to scholarship you into some coaching. And if you like it, we can continue the conversation. And this is my first session with him. You know, and most people wouldn't have the, the backbone to do that, but that's kind of the way that, you know, God wired me. And so he said, yeah, I'll try it a couple sessions. So he tried a couple sessions, I tried a few more. And before you know it, in his first year, he probably invested, I don't know, 
40 hours between coaching and coach training. And that was probably four or five years ago. And now he's proliferated it with his students and his seminary. And it's a big part of how he operates in his, minis in his ministerial style. Yeah, and this is a brilliant Benedictine monk. This is a guy with all kinds of degrees who has enormous influence in the various realms associated with this abbey in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Um, and, and also high strategic thinking theme kind of guy, um, but more introverted than you. I can see how there would be a really nice balance because he's very good at going deep one-on-one -on -one with people. He has that relational power. What a great compliment to you and what a godsend for both of you. Yeah. Yeah. He's really a pioneer. And, uh, you know, like the work that we do in this space, it's really, it's, it's pioneering work, you know, and, and the Lord, it's all the Lord's work. I mean, the Lord opened all these doors. The Lord gave us the vision. And it's great to have a priest who can actually kind of talk you off the ledge occasionally because you're like, like, am I really doing the right thing? Is this really where I should be going? Is, and, and it's just everything we're doing is deeply rooted in, in Catholic teaching. Mm -hmm. And it's great to have a priest that can give us that encouragement. Yeah. And, and one thing I love about you, Pat, is you are commanding, you are a visionary, you're very sure of yourself. But I always notice when you're in a group conversation that you stop instantly when somebody else has something to say or there's a need in the group. Um, would you say that's part of the formation that's happened with Father Boniface in the last five years? And, yeah. and kind of what were the touchstones for you to go move into that place that's a little counterintuitive if we look at your strengths, but you have become this really intuitive person with some relational strength there? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I would say the one thing that did that was pain. <laughs> the purifying, the purifying power of pain, and I will tell oh, yeah. you something else. The millennials, so my, in our business, we've had a massive shift to millennials being attracted to our industry and our niche. And I'm 57 years old, you know, and I'm I grew up in the command and control, you know. So we had all the millennials are forcing us into a serving leader vision of leadership because the command and control does not work with them. It's a coaching model that works with them. So mm -hmm. between Father Boniface and Joe Cavanaugh and other coaches and mentors I've had through the years and now my work with PCCI or my training that you're giving me, thank you for that, through PCCI and Steve Crummer and others and Kathy, uh, I am really stepping into a deeper kind of vision of, of coaching centric leadership. Yeah, it's been such an honor having you in class, Pat, um, simply in so many ways, but also because uh, of all the work that you're doing for the church. Uh, we have an incredible cohort of Catholic students in our private offering at the Professional Christian Coaching Institute. And so it's Catholic instructors and Catholic students, which has been amazing. And people like you that are just love the church and want to serve the church. Um, I don't want to miss saying too a little bit more too about all the stuff that you're doing. You're working hard at Franciscan University. You're reaching out to other colleges. You work with business leaders and priests and religious. Would you just tell us a little bit more about the work that Human Formation Coalition does and maybe even about some of the training and what's possible if anyone's interested in kind of joining forces with you? Yeah, there's really, um, couple different ways that we, we work. We really, I don't really look for opportunities. I just, I just ask the Lord to send us the people that he wants us to engage with. So we don't look for it. They just kind of show up. A big part of our work is we used to call it coach training. Now we call it accompaniment training because we don't go as deep as PCCI or ICF. But what we do is we train accompaniers they could be they could be coaches they could be mentors they could be leaders they could be disciple makers they could be teachers we train them on the basics of strengths coaching and then we train them on the basics of coaching around ephesians 4 the five-fold ministry and a lot of those people will go off and have other coach training we're going to start sending more and more of them to pcci for icf certification so that's a big part of our work and then we also do some 
some scholarship coaching of some clergy and key leaders. You know, we're doing some really exciting stuff with Franciscan University. Uh, they are so far ahead of their, they are so far ahead of the curve on personal vocation, human formation. I mean, some of the things they're doing is truly really amazing. Um, and uh, also helped get some really cool things going on. Some really interesting things in the Camden Diocese in New Jersey. We worked with some leaders there and helped them formulate a vision. And they're actually coaching 24, their life coaching around 24 priests in that diocese. Fantastic. We just had Donna on two episodes before yours. So we did talk a bit about that. And that was because of the Human Formation Coalition. And I believe she, you know, did a yes. hat tip to you and, and the HFC, Pat. Yeah, so that's actually a really good example of what we do. So when we identify high capacity leaders, we really try to come alongside them and give them what they need. As a matter of fact, I just talked to her an hour ago and I was recommended that I recommended to her that she look at look into your fall Catholic coach training cohort. I would love to have her in that cohort. She's fabulous. She she's uh, as those of you who have been watching the series all along is a high capacity leader herself. So she can recognize them and with boy to get that training that would just she would be such an arrow in God's quiver. Yeah. <laughs> she already is. <laughs> yeah, is, for sure. Yes, yes, indeed. You know, right. I want to say one other thing, Lisa. I, I've been yeah. thinking a lot about, you know, coaching in this, this non-directive space uh, that ICF is just so, so effective at, at training and teaching and certifying in. And I just believe that we are going to see in the next 10 or 15 years a real increase in Catholic coaching. A, a, a priest friend of mine, uh, he's a vicar general in a diocese, said to me, it takes a hundred years for a Vatican council to take root. We're 50 <laughs> years in. So we've got to really have the long game on this. Perspective is good. Yeah, I just want to say for those of you going, what's ICF? What's PCCI? ICF is the International Coaching Federation, which is the gold standard for ethics, accountability, best practices, ongoing research and community accountability, all of that. And so because coaching is an unregulated profession, anyone can call themselves a coach. So those of us who are seeking certification or have certification, we're a little snobby about it. I'm not speaking for you, Pat, but I personally am because there's so much junk out there. And we want people who are seeking coaching to get people who are truly skilled and held to a higher standard, who choose to be held to a higher standard. And so, Pat, you've been learning from one of the greatest strengths coaches on the planet. Your mentor, Joe Cavanaugh, was the one who started the faith-based division at Gallup years ago. He's a phenomenal coach. And uh, because of you, I'm getting to work with him, too. And so um, you, you know, integrating the head and the heart, we talk about sometimes using a assessments is a very intellectual thing. There's a certain amount of mentoring and teaching that you have to do as a coach. But when you integrate it with that, you know, accessing the heart, doing that deep uh, work, you, you unleash a river of connection to God, of creativity, of fr newfound freedom. It really is a very powerful combination. And so I just love that, that you're growing so much so rapidly in exploring and practicing those techniques. Pat, you know, you've even said in class how it's changing your team meetings and, and all sorts of things. It's really been a, a neat new tool in your toolbox. And you know, what's interesting is, so my daughter actually had her first strengths. She's now an, an intern at Moano. She's home for the summer. And we, when we hire people, we have a culture of human flourishing. So we are very attentive to, um, to coaching and training people when they start. But it's interesting. So she's just getting coached and trained right now. And I believe that in the marketplace, human, human talent, human capital is the competitive advantage. And the ability to create a flourishing culture and allowing people to flourish as human persons, according to how God designed them, is a wonderful thing. And uh, I believe it's a, it's a competitive advantage in the market. Too. Oh yeah. Um, I know that that you 
you referred to it just now. Could you describe a little bit the culture of human flourishing in your business and what those steps are like? What is the formation like? And, and yeah. by the way, folks, while other people are having a hard time finding people to do jobs, people are lining up to work at Moana. So perk up your ears. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've, been, we've been reasonably successful um, at attracting talent uh, in our sales organizations. So we have 46 in-home design consultants that go in the home. They're straight commission salespeople. And we are very um, intentional about training and developing them according to how they're uniquely designed. So we use the Clifton Strengths tool. We use the Impact tool, which is Ephesians 4. And we just try to work with them according to their gifting. So a salesperson who is more, let's say, stronger in the relationship domain of the Clifton Strengths, they're going to sell different than someone who's strategic thinking. So we really try to pay attention to how they're wired. And my team leaders that actually do, are attentive to the DNA of the person in terms of how they lead, they are absolutely my most successful people. Sales, wow. successful leaders, I should say. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I love that. You know, Gallup did, um, during COVID, they were doing all kinds of research. And one of the things that came out was that millennials, which you have mentioned you're getting a lot more of in your sales force, um, they they seek out places to work where they can be formed and coached. They really want to be developed. They want someone to see them and hear them and draw out what is good in them. And it's an interesting cultural phenomenon, isn't it? That right at this moment where, where coaching is exploding in the world, it has been for some time, but really taking hold in the Catholic Church, that this generation of young people desires that. You know, I, I believe, so... I don't, I'm very careful. My people know that I'm, uh, that I'm Catholic and yeah. So I don't, I'm able to have conversations around how people are designed in terms of their God-given uniqueness, you know? So that's, and I believe when people in, encounter God and their created being, it tills the gospel for them to really encounter God in their, in their heart, if that makes sense. If, so I think that it's, it's all holistic uh, in terms of the way we need to approach the millennials. I, will t I tell the millennials, the young people that work for us, if, if, I would have no if, I would have, if somebody would have trained me and coached me, it wasn't until I was 50 years old that I got all of this. If, if I would have had this at age 30, my life would look a lot different. I mean, and, I, and, I'm, and, I, and God has been so good. We were, we were very blessed with our business and, and our success in the business. But I think if I would have had this 20 or 30 years ago, our business would be at a much different, much higher level. I'm satisfied with where we are and I thank the Lord for it. But I just believe that this is, this coaching around DNA, around human formation, around personal vocation is, is powerful for evangelization yeah. and discipleship. Yeah, it's a kind of presence. To be present to another person, deeply listen, and be curious to stay in the question, to draw out of them what they might not have said or offered or even been able to express before you asked that powerful question that shifted their perspective or invited them, maybe the first time on a team that they've ever been invited to say, here's how I would do it, or here's what I'm seeing from where I stand through the lens of my natural talents. Because you get so, so many different visions and you actually see better together. Yeah, amen. It's really um, one body, many parts from Corinthians. I mean, that's really the vision of, that's my vision of leadership, one body, many parts. You know, I have a lot of conversations with clergy. Uh, well, Father, there are no well-rounded leaders, only well-rounded leadership teams. And, uh -huh. and that's not something that they get in seminary typically. So my experience is, Generally speaking, they're formed to be all things to all people. Right. Yeah. And so they they're never really have the confidence that, of course, as you just kind of intimated, leads them back to God when they find that thing in them that's so life-giving and that, that, that contributes in a particular way. They can't help but think of the designer in them 
that, wow, I, I am different from everybody else. I have something unique to bring to the table. Yeah. One in, what is it? One, there's only a one in 33 million chance that somebody has the same top five with the Gallup mm -hmm. tool. Is that right? Yeah, in the same order. If they're in the same order, it's one in 33.5 million. If you add just a sixth, if the same six in the same order, it's like a hundred zeros. It, the numbers are just inconceivable. And so, and here's the other thing that if you could find, and there's a, there's a uh, website called Strengths Twins where people try to find the person with the same top five in the same order, and they do occasionally, or mm -hmm. at least the same top five, maybe in a different order. But even if you could get those people in a room together and they read their nuanced feedback aloud to each other, it would be different because there's all this blending that goes on with this tool where you get the sense of that tapestry that God has woven into your being, all the different talents throughout your report yeah. that work together to create a totally unique and unrepeatable human being. Unrepeatable, that's the key word. Yeah, we love Joshua's book, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So any final thoughts to leave with our audience, Pat? It can be personal, professional, your, your vision for the church. What would you like to leave us with? Yeah, I just want to thank you, Lisa, for stepping into this space, for really being a pioneer in the Catholic coaching space with the work you're doing with BCCI and the Catholic coaching cohort. And I just really want to encourage your viewers to, to pay attention to what you're doing, pay attention to this upcoming Catholic coach training cohort that you'll be uh, launching in the fall. And I just have great anticipation and expectation for what God is doing in the, in the, in the Catholic coaching space. Oh, thank you so much, Pat. You're always just giving and giving and lifting everybody up. Pat's very good at calling out the strength in another person and seeing their potential. Everybody connect with Pat Molino at humanformationcoalition.org org so much interesting there it's just a beautiful site and there's so much there in terms of enrichment and ways that you can plug in you can become a part of this incredible movement and if you're in the pittsburgh area check out beautifulfloors.com i'll have that in the show notes everybody thank you so much for being with us pat cannot thank you enough this has been a total joy uh, as we say goodbye thank, thank you, you. Oh, God, bless God bless you and your family. What a beautiful family. And everybody, to learn even more about growing in your natural talents, you can visit my website, wonderfullymade139.com. And if you enjoyed the show, please hit subscribe and share us with your friends so you don't have to miss an episode. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Appreciate your tuning in. Take care. Bye-bye.